Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to look at making a note on a specific book of the Bible and how this can be a useful resource within your Obsidian or similar note taking system. So as you can see here, I've got the example for the Gospel of John right now, uh, because this is a series that we've been going through at church. And I have, uh, you know, I have a whole load of stuff that <laughs> that has gone on here, including some structure, but I'm not going to really look at this one because this is one that I've already made and prepared. Um, but instead, I thought I could start with uh, 1 John, which is one which I haven't really dug into yet. And so I thought we could fill this out together, bulk it up, and uh, that will be the content of this video. So I'm going to start by grabbing one of my templates. I'm going to insert a template. I have a book of the Bible overview template. This has some basic prompts for me to think about when I fill in a book of the Bible. Who was the book written for? When was it written? Who wrote it? Key messages, main events, structure, themes. But before I even get into those, because this is my first time filling it in, I'm going to add questions. Questions I have about the book. So obviously some of these are going to be similar, but perhaps there are some that are top of my mind right now that I want to add in. So there is one. Who wrote the book? Who wrote the book of John? This is a question which um, I'm aware of in some of the scholarly debates. Is it the same person who wrote the Gospel of John? Was it a different apostle? Was there like John the Elder and John the Evangelist? Uh, so things like that is, is one. Uh, that's a question which I have here. Okay, uh, who was it written for? That's a big question that I want to know the answer to. Uh, when was it written? Who wrote it? So we could put in John. Uh, John the Elder, right? Is the one. So I'm just putting down some information that I know here. Uh, and key key messages, key themes. I know that love and obedience is a key message. Main events. It's not really events because this is not a narrative. Um, instead, it's an epistle. So I think I'm going to cut out main events from this one. Structure, that would be a good one to do. Themes. Actually, themes is probably more for this one here. So I could put that down there. I'm starting off with just getting my notes down because this is part of the kind of effective learning method. You prime yourself for new knowledge, for new insight by going through what you already know and collecting that information so that you're ready to add more on top. You're kind of, it's like putting all your cards down on a table before you then add more on uh, and you can arrange them around. Who wrote the book of John? Uh, I guess like maybe I should actually have application. Application. I guess I can split that out later, personal and more extended. That is a good question. What does this letter mean for me today? What are some common misunderstandings? That would be another really good one to think about as we come to it. Yeah, okay. So I think I've got some, some basic things down. Now let's, uh, why don't we just go into the letter? We can start exploring. So this is a nice thing about using, actually, let's go back to 1 John. What we can do is we could have another section here. We could have layout. I don't know where to put that. I'll put it at the bottom because why not? Layout. John uh, whoops, zero one one 
Sean. So the reason why I have like number two here is a really weird story. Um, I was copying the folder across and it duplicated a whole load of my, like pretty much every file in my database. And I've slowly been removing the duplicates, but it takes a really long time to do that. Oh, four, one, John, oh, five, sorry, six, I think that's it, right? One, John, zero, six, nothing there, okay, cool. Oh, maybe I'll add like this. That's an idea to have in there. Okay, so I've got the layout now. So what I can do actually, I could open a new pane. So I've got that here. I'm gonna get rid of the preview because I don't need to while I go through this. Okay, and now I can start uh, reading through the letter. I can start making my notes. So I'll speed up this part here I won't go through everything that I'm saying. Okay, so there you go. I've gone through the whole book, I've made some quick observations, notes on themes and and things like this. I've noticed as well that the structure is very unlike a Pauline epistle, which follows a uh, typical structure style. And I think I have a note actually, epistle uh, structure. I know I have some information on this somewhere, so I'm going to look it up afterwards and then I'm going to add it to this. So it's stuff like from Paul to the Church of Ephesus, things like this. But uh, there's none of that, there's no blessing as well. So it's, you know, maybe the introduction was cut off. I, I don't know, but that's, that's interesting, but it's not following a, t a typical structure there. And the ending is different as well from typical epistles. Uh, it doesn't like give any final greetings. Uh, we don't have like Paul's, we don't have the way that Paul structures things. There's not a lot of this therefore and uh, unlike Paul's arguments, you know, he's basically doing rhetoric in, in print, yeah? Uh, so it's really different in structure uh, and that that's something that's been highlighted to me as I've been reading through. Now obviously I've gone through and seen some themes. Love and obedience is a very big theme. There's light and darkness, uh, talking about children, hated by the world, uh, what knowing God means and then encouragement to kind of continue your faith and boldness. So uh, yeah, these are all themes that are also in the Gospel of John, which is why there's this question, is it from the, uh, the Gospel writer uh, or is it from the community? Or is it someone who's in the same sort of area? But we don't have like an address at the start of this one. So it doesn't tell us that it's from John. So that adds more to here. So maybe I'll just open up this note here. Uh, who wrote one, John? Was it? Uh, was it the same writer as the epistle, as the gospel? John. There are similar themes. Um, there are similar themes in the latter. So I'll just, uh, this is just a note for me to come back later. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna add a tag at the bottom, which is to uh, to create. Oh, whoops. Yes, I'm trying a different way to do tags, nested tags. Okay, add a link back at the top, uh, one John. So I can go back to you. Okay, so now I can go back here. Really 
this for her structure of the epistle. Uh, what are some other things I noticed? So I had, I also came across some questions as I was going through this. Uh, I'm gonna take out what does this lesson mean for me today and uh, and you know, common misunderstandings. Maybe that's not such a so useful for me. But uh, yeah, there's this part here: the spirit, the water, and the blood. Let's go to you. Let's bring you up over there. Um, yeah. For there are three who testify the spirit, the water, and the blood, and three agree as one. That's right. He came by the water and the blood, not only with water, but also the water and blood. It's the spirit that testifies. I don't know. That seems a bit interesting. It stood out to me as I was reading through, at least. Uh, probably you know all about this. And so. For you, it's like, well, Chris, why don't you know? But I don't know. I'm, I'm intrigued and I'm going to look into that. And then he also has this thing where he talks about sins which lead to death and sins which don't lead to death. And I'm really intrigued by that. That really stood out to me. So that is definitely something that I need to research and go into. Uh, who is it written for? There doesn't seem to be much information in the text about this. Uh, when was it written? Again, don't have much information in the text there. Key verse. I don't know. I, I need to read through it, I think, another time to come up with that. Um, and I, I need to, like, properly write down the structure and get a few more things. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to read through it again on my own. This time I'm actually going to use a paper Bible. I'm going to try and put down a structure of this letter. And then I'm going to go and look at some of the study materials that I have on this. So I can add some things like, you know, when was it written probably, the like time period there, and who was it written for, some of the theories surrounding that. And uh, then I can start building up this note a bit more and improving it. Because this is a work in progress, this is to process. I don't know what links I'll have in here, but... Uh, and it's a uh, it's book of the Bible as well. So I think I need notes, book, notes, book, Bible, Bible study, could be one. So I need to add a few more notes there. I'm still working out my tagging system. Uh, so you can see some changes have emerged <laughs> since I last did it. I hope you found this little review and going through uh, the Gospel of John interesting. I've not finished yet. I'm going to do a second video where I have developed this a bit more and you can see how I've gone from kind of initial impressions into actually turning in this into something which will be useful uh, to use in study and it will end up more, more like something like this where I have uh, a whole load of resources and links and uh, information, different themes, and uh, it becomes something that's actually useful for study. Uh, I hope that's been useful for you to see kind of the first step in this process of creation. In the next video, I'm going to show you why I've developed this more, why I've added some more information so it becomes a real reference resource that I can use uh, in Bible study, something more like my book on John. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see the next step in this process.